Hallelujah. I bring you greetings in Jesus' wonderful name from the land of India. And um, the words will not adequately express my gratitude to dear Pastor Jason for the honor and the gracious words that he has spoken. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. I enjoyed the presence of the Lord in the house of the Lord today. How many of you have enjoyed the presence of the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. We are living in a day when God is raising up worshipers. I travel the world. I see such a release of the anointing of God in different nations where people are lifted up in the realm of glory and people worship the Lord for hours and hours and hours. Holy Spirit is breaking the traditionalism, so-called religious drudgery that the churches have maintained. The realm of glory is intercepting the earthly environs. It's happening in India. It's happening in so many nations in the Far East. It's happening in Africa. It's happening in so many other nations where people are really desperate and hungry for the real presence of God. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is in the house of the Lord. Let's sit under the presence of God and meditate on his word. I like you to open up your Bibles, if you would please, to gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. The Lord had laid very powerful word on my heart. John, the seventh chapter, and the 37th verse. Let me read it for you. On the last and the greatest day of the feast, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow within them. By this he meant the spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Up to that time, the spirit hadn't been given, since Jesus had not yet been glorified. Hallelujah. If you look into John's gospel, theologically it's called non-synoptic gospel. Synoptic word means looking in the similar direction. All three apostles, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, their narrative is very much similar about the life of Jesus Christ. But John portrays a different picture. If you read the gospel, you see that there is an intent of John to present the things that Jesus did in a different light. Here, John says, John writes, that on the last day of that great festival, some translations say the greatest feast, now, the word for feast in Hebrew is moed or moadim, which is a very profound Hebrew word. Word feast does not mean a religious occasion or a traditional gathering. The word feast, which is moadim or moed in Hebrew, literally means a season, a chosen occasion a set time by God in which the heavenly window will open up upon the earth. A peculiar season in which God will come down and meet his people and he will unravel his purpose and plan to his people. This is what the feasts were designed as God gave them to the people of Israel. On the last day of this feast, this is the feast of the tabernacle. I go to Israel a few times, sometimes twice a year. All that God blesses me, uh, we, 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 we keep collecting the money, keep saving so that I take my family and worship the Lord in Jerusalem, in Israel. I'm connected to the Jewish heritage. And ever since that happened in my life, a tremendous blessing is poured out on me and my household. And I have seen my ministry transform. And I have seen hundreds and thousands of pastors in churches ever since they began to stand with Israel 
and pray fervently for Israel. There is a supernatural invasion that is taking place. Many people witness the angels, the host of angels around them. Many people have seen such great financial outpour. Many people have seen the uh, phenomenal increase in their ministries. Great things, great miracles, great healings. Feasts were very peculiar occasions. This is the Feast of the Tabernacle. And Jesus has gone to celebrate. If you look into my, John's Gospel, John is very particular about uh, mentioning all the feasts that Jesus celebrated as a Jewish man. Hallelujah. Now on the Feast of Tabernacle, Jesus stood, and some translations say, stood outside the temple. And he cried in a loud voice. And he said, if anyone who is thirsty, let him come unto me and drink. Now let me give you the backdrop very quickly. People of Israel, the seed of Abraham, lived in the land of bondage for over 400 years. God had already prophesied that his seed will be in a foreign land and would live in bondage. And then God miraculously will deliver them. Four generations lived in bondage. And then God raised a man named Moses. And through that shepherd who was supposedly to be the king 40 years back, God overthrew the empire of Egypt. A gigantic kingdom brought to her knees. And in the middle of the night, when each family slew the innocent lamb and collected the pure, innocent blood of the lamb and applied on their doorposts, God said unto Moses that in the middle of the night, I will go. Then other place God said, my angel will go and smite every house that is not covered under the blood of the lamb. In the middle of the night, the angel of death was unleashed in Egypt. And the angel looked only at one thing. The angel did not look at the name plate. Doctor, reverend, this and that. He didn't look any credential, worldly credential. The angel only looked for the blood of the lamb. Yeah. Hallelujah. What do the demons see in us and make the distinction? Not our worldly accolades and merits. So many times I'm judged by the way I dress and the way I look. I, I purposely live in a, in, a, in a simple way. So many times people misunderstand me. Even the usher, the gentle lady there, she thought, she looked at me two or three times before she brought me here. And then she confirmed <laughs> from the pastor. <laughs> God is doing amazing things. Hallelujah. Angel of death only saw the blood. And wherever the blood was, he spared the household. The demons and the devils, they are not scared by your degrees, your theological credentials. They are scared by the blood of the lamb that is on you. They are scared by the righteousness that is inside you, the holiness, the purity that is inside you. They, they are scared of your worship. Hallelujah. That night, angels slew every Egyptian firstborn. And there was a great cry. And people of God made an exodus from the land of bondage. For over 400 years, they were treated badly. Their wages, their dues were not given by Pharaoh and his cohorts. But in a single stroke in the middle of the night, God made them recover everything. They looted Egypt. The Egyptian women are known for, you know, using uh, plenty of gold and silver jewelry on their bodies. They took everything, the, all the precious gems and jewel and silver and gold, and they packed up and threw before the Hebrews, and they asked them, leave our land. And they left the land. All the wages of 400 years, God made them recover in a single stroke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there were only 72 people when they went in Egypt. But when they came out, despite every odd that was heavily stacked against them, the persecution, the, 
suppression, the social and political injustice they incurred. Despite everything, they grew. Hallelujah. If God has a covenant with you, it doesn't matter how or the kind of circumstances you live, that the social, uh, pol political, economic environment around you, you are bound to grow. You are bound to increase. You are bound to multiply. <laughs> when they came out, they became nearly 3 million people. They were only 72 when they went in. And they became nearly 3 million. And they took everything from Egypt. And they set out to the land that God promised over 400 years to their father Abraham, the land that flows with milk and honey. God will always keep his promise. God will never abandon his word. He watches over his word, hallelujah. The prophecies that have been spoken over you, the word that has been unleashed over you, it will come to pass, hallelujah. There is no demon in hell that can hold back your destiny, your future, and the prophetic declaration over your life. They came out, nearly three million people, the cloud of glory covering them. And the word of God says, during the night, the pillar of fire will come upon them. And all these 40 years as they sojourned in the wilderness, a mysterious rock flew after them. All 40 years. At the break of the day, God will open up heavens and rain manna. And the, the psalmist says that there was the food of the angels. They ate the food of the angels 40 years and none among them was diseased, feeble, or sick. Hallelujah. Their clothes were still fresh. Their shoes were not worn out. Miraculously, God was with them. Supernaturally, he was leading them and supernaturally, he was feeding them. How many of you think that God can do this again with us? Hallelujah. We serve the same mighty God of Israel. Hallelujah. Forty years, that rock was flying after them. And nobody, even in the Old Testament, no prophet, no seer, could fully understand who that rock was. That rock gave them water in the wilderness where there was no water. The rock gave them the water. And Paul the, uh, Paul the Apostle Many centuries later, as he writes his epistle to the church at Corinth, he says that rock was nobody else but the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Now on this particular feast of tabernacle, which continues for seven days, when the last day comes, which is a very, which is kind of the highlight of the festival, the high priest early morning goes to the pool of Siloam, and in a golden vessel he will fetch some water, add certain herbs and spices in it, and he will bring it into the house of the Lord, into the temple that was built by Solomon. And he will pour the water on the altar. And the entire assembly of the Israelite people, even, uh, even the diaspora of Jewish people is all gathered in, in Jerusalem to celebrate. There were three peculiar festivals that all Hebrew males were commanded by God to assemble in Jerusalem. And this was one among them. Those three feasts. So they all are gathered from different parts of the world. And even the native Jewish people. And as the high priest poured the water, the whole congregation of the Israelite people would chant Isaiah, the 12th chapter, which says, for God has become a salvation. And we will draw water of salvation. We will draw water from, from the wells of salvation abundantly. And they will commemorate and they will remember how their forefathers, as they sojourned in the wilderness, in the land where there is no water, how the Almighty God provided them water supernaturally. So some drink that water, some take that water symbolically. On this occasion, they are celebrating, celebrating that glorious rock that provided water abundantly to their forefathers. And see, the same rock is standing there. But they don't recognize him. You know, the tragedy is God's incredible dealings with man become a dead religion. God's glorious encounter, they, be, they, tend, they, they become religion. That's human tendency to make, to, to create religion out of God. If you 
If you read uh, Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, when God called Moses up on the mountain where he gave his laws and decrees and commandments to the people of Israel, he was trapped up in the glory of God for 40 days and 40 nights. And if you read 23rd chapter of Leviticus, God gives Moses that detail of how they were supposed to celebrate each festival. God shows Moses that these feasts are not mere religious assemblies. They are not for traditions and rituals. These are the occasions when I will come, when I will meet my people, and I will impart them a new revelation. Hallelujah. We need, you know, we are designed to be led by the revelation. We are not created to be led by religion. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is supernatural walk in the Holy Spirit. In fact, in the New Testament, the word religion in the, in the Greek religios occurs only two times. And, at, and it's not connected with Christianity. Christianity is our walk under the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Bible calls the people of Israel for 40 years as they traveled in the wilderness. The writer of Hebrews calls them the church in the wilderness. The church in the wilderness, the shadow church. What did the shadow church have? The shadow church had the cloud of glory over them. The shadow church had the pillar of fire over them. The shadow church had manna raining each day. Hallelujah. The word of God says we go from faith to faith. We go from glory to glory. We go from strength to strength. Hallelujah. I learned uh, within these years, almost 25, 26 years, I have been walking with the Lord. I learned from the word of God that there is something called discovered truth. And there's another thing called revealed truth. They both sound one, similar. But there is a huge difference. Hallelujah. I do believe, Apostle Paul writes to Timothy, he says, study to show thyself approved unto God, that we need to dig the word of God, delve deeper in the word of God. But there is another dimension. As somebody said, there are things that are taught, and there are things that can only be caught. Hallelujah. There is the revelation of the word of God that worshippers get as they zoom into the realm of glory. You know, God told me that in the earth, he's opening up divine portals in these days. There is, uh, there is a great download of the wisdom of God that is happening on the earth. God will not let the secular world, the information technology, beat his kingdom. There is much more in the heavenly realm than it is in the earthly realm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God told Moses, if you read 23rd chapter of Leviticus, the second and the fourth verse, God said so passionately to Moses, these are going to be my feast. He gives, he gives the detail of every feast. He says, these are my feast. Then he says, these are the feast of Yahweh. These are the occasions when I come and meet my people. They were supposed to be Yahweh's feast. But you know what happened? The tragedy of religion overtook the revelation. If you read in the Gospels, Jesus was really mad at the religious people. Not because they were keeping the holy law of God. Not for that purpose. If you read carefully, you, you will find, um, you can read in Matthew, the Mark's Gospel, Matthew's Gospel. Jesus was upset by their religion, religiosity their traditionalism, their ritualistic Jewishism. He said, you, uh, you hold unto the traditions of your elders and you nullify the word of God. You care for what, uh, you care for the teachings that the rabbis and, 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 the, and the people, mere men have established, but you do not uphold the living word of God. If you read John's gospel, the seventh chapter, let me read it for you, the second verse. It says, but when the Jewish festival of tabernacle was near, you see the shift that took place? It was supposed to be Yahweh's festival. Whose festival is it become? 
Jewish festival. They kicked God out of everything and they created their own religion. They wrote several books, how to interpret the law, how to decode mysteries, Mishnah, Talmud, Qumran scrolls and Midras and Kabbalistic people, you know, came into being and so many, there were 22 sects of Jewish people, the time Jesus was preaching. And if you look at the backdrop of this particular verse that I read, John 7, 37, Jesus is actually having heated conversation with the Pharisee, Sadducees, and the teachers of the law. And he goes to Jerusalem on the day when the festival is in full swing. The high priest pouring the water and people chanting from the book of Isaiah, he stands there right in their midst. He says, whoever among you is thirsty, let him come unto me. All the Jewish people, they are commemorating the festival when God took care of their ancestors and provided them the water. And they made a religion out of that experience in the wilderness. Jesus is standing there and telling them, your religion cannot satisfy you. Your traditions and your rituals cannot give you satisfaction. If anyone among you is thirsty, let him come unto me. Hallelujah. If anyone among you is thirsty, let him come unto me. And let him come and drink. Hallelujah. Let him come and drink. Let him come and drink. Jesus said, even in the book of Revelation three times, let him come and drink. Hallelujah. If anyone is thirsty, let him come unto me. Hallelujah. Jesus is calling people unto himself. When Jesus came, he showed people the Father. When Jesus was taken up to heaven, the disciples showed the world the Father. Then came the dark ages of the church. Then the clergy began to show people the church. Hallelujah. We have to summon the nations of the earth into the presence of Jesus Christ. Because in the presence of the Lord is the answer to every problem, is the solution to everything that they are facing in their life. Hallelujah. It's only in the presence of Jesus Christ. It's only at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, John in his, uh, in his uh, Greek version, he uses the word for man, which is anthropos. That's the word from where we get the English word anthropology, the genetics of man. And this word for man, it, which is in the New Testament, is very profound. Anthropos means an entity who is thirsty on the inside. A creature who has a divine vacuum on the inside. A creation that is created with heavenly emptiness. All human beings, regardless of their religion, culture, creed, ethnic origin, generic pool, nationality, color of the skin. We all are anthropos. We are created in the divine image of God and all human beings are empty on the inside. There is a divine hollowness that only Jesus can fill, hallelujah. Religion cannot fill it, hallelujah. Our church agendas and activities cannot fill. Encounter with Jesus, hallelujah. A real encounter, a real encounter with Jesus can only satisfy us on the inside. Hallelujah. So the Lord is calling us for a real encounter. When we will have a real encounter, we will carry a living Jesus into the world. In the dark world. Hallelujah. And then they will see us. And by seeing us, many hearts will turn to the Lord. I have testimonies, few places in India. People just saw me walking on the road. Like a young guy, he saw me walking on the road. Every day I was walking. From, it's, a, it's a state which is adjacent to Himalayas. I, was, I would have prayer walk early in the morning. I would walk early day and the young guy from his balcony will look at me. Something said to him, he is a very special man. So he kept walk, watching me and eventually he walked another guy, local person from the same town, uh, going with me. So he went to him and he asked about him, about me, who this man is. There is something special about him. 
So he uh, shared Jesus with him. Then he came to me and um, I was having conversation with him. I said, there is nothing special about me. There is one who lives on the inside of me. He is special. <laughs> Hallelujah. The one who lives in me is special. And his name is Jesus. He became a believer. He is a, he is a, he's a young evangelist. He's working with YWAM now. The Lord said he will make us the epistles, the living epistles. Hallelujah. Such a glory of God is being poured out in the earth these days. And this glory is only coming upon the worshippers, let me tell you. It is falling on the worshippers. If you read the Gospels, four Gospels, anyone who came to Jesus, no matter how big his need was, anyone that came to Jesus, you, you just watch it in the Gospels. Use the concordance. If he fell at the feet of Jesus and worshipped him, he got it whatever he needed. Yeah. He never went back empty-handed. Let's shake off the relig religiosity. Let's shake off so-called churchianity. So-called system that we created, the agendas that we have created in the church. Let's come to Jesus. Hallelujah. Shall we all stand up? Hallelujah. I am going to sing a song which is in Hindi. It, maybe you won't understand, but this is the version of As the Deer Panteth for the waters, streams of water. I will sing just one stanza. Meri ruh khuda ki piyasi hai meri Meri ruh khuda ki piyasi hai meri ruh khuda ki piyasi hai meri ruh khuda ki piyasi hai meri ruh yeshu ki piyasi hai meri Meri Ruh Khuda Ki Piyasi Hai Meri Ruh Meri Ruh Meri Ruh Meri Ruh Meri Ruh Khuda Ki Piyasi Hai Meri Ruh Heavenly Father Pour out your anointing. Pour out your anointing upon your people. Holy Father, in the name of Yeshua Hamashiach, I pray, Father, for this nation of Trinidad and Tobago. I pray, Father, for the invasion of the Holy Spirit on this beautiful island. Father, in the name of Jesus, I unleash the angels in this country. I unleash the angels. Father, in the name of Jesus, I, I bind the forces of darkness over this, over this island in the name of Jesus. Father, I bind the forces of darkness in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything that is divisive, trying to divide this nation, I bind that power in the name of Jesus. I bind political corruption in this land in the name of Jesus Christ. I bind crime and I bind the spirit of drug in this nation in the name of Jesus. Lord, cause an awakening in, the, in this land in the name of Jesus. Cause an awakening. Lord, you told me a few years ago, you will raise up Trinidad and Tobago just like you raised the United States of America to carry the good news, to be a, a, a missionary nation. Hallelujah. I pray, Father, for your servants in the name of Jesus Christ that your fire will come. Lord, as the cloud of glory came over the church and the wilderness, the cloud of glory will come. The fire will descend in the name of Jesus. Lord, the revelatory manna will reign in the name of Jesus Christ. And the rock, rock that satisfies us. Hallelujah. Lord, I pray for the pouring out of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that your spirit 
will do an amazing work in this congregation, in this church. Father, I, I bless, being your servant, I bless every family of this congregation, every household. Lord, I cover every household under the blood of the Lamb. And Father, I pronounce the benefits of the blood of Yeshua over every family. Lord, I, 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 I declare the blessings of Abraham unleashed over every household. Father, I speak, I, I speak health and healing. Every manner of sickness and disease, I rebuke your authority in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I speak financial outpour over your people. Financial outpour, increase in their businesses, raises and increases in their jobs, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for the young people of this congregation, the youth, Father. You, I, I, I bless the youth in the name of, in the name of Yeshua. Hamashiach. I bless the young people. Lord, I pray, Lord, that they will, Lord, that they will learn righteousness and purity and holiness. Lord, that's righteousness and purity and holiness. That spirit will be stirred up in the, in the hearts of young people of this congregation. I bless them. Father, I bless every couple, every married couple. I speak blessing in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, I bless your servant. Pastor Jason. And Father, I, I bless the pastor, her mom. Lord, I bless uh, Pastor Jason's wife and his children, Father. Father, I bless the assistant pastor of this church. Father, I bless his family. I bless his children. Lord, may your hand be upon the leadership. May your hand be upon the leadership. May your mighty hand be upon the leadership. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that they will be taken up in the realm of glory. Lord, that this church, that this church, Lord, comes under the glory realm. Glory anointing, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Where great signs and wonders and miracles, Lord, uncanny things happen, hallelujah. Let that realm hit this church in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Bless you. I give you praise. Give you glory. Yeshua. Yeshua, we love you. We love you with all our being. We love you. You are our first love. Yeshua, you are our everything. You will desire, you will seek. Yeshua, flood our hearts with your presence. Make us more hungry and desperate for your presence. Let an anointing come over this congregation when people will begin to pray for hours and hours. Lord, they will learn to, they will learn to, Lord, they will learn to tap into, tap into the realm of glory in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let the angels, angels be unleashed over every household. May they see the angelic beings. May they see the miraculous things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Use this congregation to carry the saga of your love to the ends of the earth, Father. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. We praise you. We give you glory. In Yeshua's mighty name. Amen. Amen.